What's up guys, it's Crash It. You guessed it, today I wanna to talk about the finals. Now I know there's already a ton of videos out there by awesome content creators giving their thoughts and opinions on this. I hope to provide you with something a little bit unique and talk about mine. The fact that you clicked on the video to get my perspective is uh, absolutely humbling and I really, really appreciate it, but it goes both ways. I would lo also love to hear from you guys down in the comments where you stand on this, whether you're on the console on the sidelines watching some Twitch streams of it, or if you've been able to get in and play a little bit on your own, I would love to hear from you guys. So how I want to break down this video is I want to talk about some of the good stuff and then some of the questions I still have and some some things we need to think about especially things about um, the the historically a little bit sketchy publisher Nexon I want to talk about what we know about console because I know my console friends are just itching to get a hold of this game and get in there so we'll talk about everything we know there and then some of the bad stuff I think that really needs improving on so let, let's go ahead and get into it so I think in the good section we should start out with the first one that is huge it's unique, right? This is something, love it or hate the game. Some people say that the uh, setting is not for them. You have to respect that this is something unique and different in the first person shooter space. In a time where we've had extraction shooters start to take over, battle royales for a long time since the reveal of PUBG, and then generic you know, yearly releases of Call of Duty multiplayer year after year after year, Battlefield kind of doing its thing. This is something new and unique in the double A borderline triple A space. I would say triple A space, given how this game looks and probably the size of the PUBG publisher and everything it is something new and I, it's kind of exhausting for me to people to always say it looks like this game it looks like this game you could do you know it looks like team fortress mixed with overwatch and battlefield i don't want to say that this is the first time although you can take these individual mechanics from different games it's the first time that they've been put together in this fashion this is a truly unique feeling first person shooter and experience and that is exciting i'm rooting for this game so hopefully more developers more studios aren't afraid to step outside the box and come out with something new because we desperately need new and unique things so massive props to embark studios for doing something different and making the game that they obviously wanted to make that comes along with kind of a unique setting now a lot of people don't necessarily like this setting but to me it kind of makes sense it's not my favorite either I would love to see this studio do something with of course like a battlefield or a military style round based shooter would be amazing with this studio um, and but I know that this is the game that they wanted to make and it kind of makes sense you think in a kind of a futuristic urban gameplay show the contestants are gonna wear crazy and wild outfits and stuff to kind of make a statement and express themselves so the setting and everything and the over-the-top colors and all that stuff kind of makes sense with the lore behind the game. So that kind of goes as to what I think about the game. It's good, not necessarily for everyone, but I do think um, it's unique and we needed something like this. The other thing Embark Studios should be commended on is the fast nature of their patch bug fixes. Balancing updates and bug fixes have been really fast. I think in the first week of the beta, they're already up to three like hot fixes. So that speaks really good to the game moving forward and being supported and being fixed and keeping running well. So if they can keep that up, that is great. They have obviously, obviously been at the ready. And, and to go right along the those lines i appreciate this beta as a true beta test right you can tell they had the closed beta under nda now they have the closed beta that's just a little bit more open letting more people in but they're doing fast bug fixes and to my console friends that's probably why it's on pc with steam they're able to do rapid hot fixes without having to get everything okayed by sony and microsoft so it's a little bit quicker to get things patched and get things fixed if stuff goes wrong they're working on getting a stable build on pc and then likely getting that build ported over and running well on the consoles so that's what they're doing but i appreciate Appreciate this being a true beta even though people are kind of getting an extended look at the game maybe taking a little bit of that um, excitement and mystery out of the release it's a good way to get a finished game at launch so I have to commend them on actually a true beta process and what I mean by that is battlefields and call of duties those were not really betas in the sense that we generally do think of betas in a software development you guys know that they were just a few months before launch they're essentially a play test demo they're essentially a way to get pre-orders because you know if you pre-order you can play the beta early so that's what it's used as a marketing tool in this case this is an actual beta and i definitely really appreciate that we need to see more of that in the industry to get more finished games the other thing you guys have seen this i'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because it is crazy the destruction. The destruction in the game is really cool. I think we kind of realized that a lot of our destruction left the Battlefield franchise with these employees and went over to Embark because it is really cool. It's server side running on Unreal 5. So that proves to Battlefield, if they did go to Unreal 5, it can handle the destruction all server side. It works really good for a closed beta. The game ran, runs pretty well. 
The other thing that's really good, I think, is the team play and team dynamics. Um, that's kind of a layer that goes into the game mode just a little bit, how you want to set up your team and can add quite a bit of replayability to it. Um, whether you want to run, you know, heavy, medium or light contestants and work off of each other with good comps and they work together in different ways that you can kind of come up with your own team's meta, which is really cool. So this leads to some of the questions that I still have. This, this beta inevitably brought up some questions. Maybe you guys have some too, but what about a console beta? There's a lot of console players that are itching to get their hands on this because even though on PC, we're a little bit starved for new and unique P, uh, FPS games, console is especially so. So uh, what we know about console guys is that um, allegedly it's only coming to PS5 and Xbox S and S, so current gen stuff only, and crossplay is not even yet confirmed. However, um, this is purely speculation, but with release supposed to happen by the end of the year, I would definitely expect a console beta in the coming months. Um, I'm not sure how they would want to release this. I feel like they should kind of stay away from that holiday window if the game is done and complete by then and kind of do their own release window, maybe late summer would be pretty cool. So in the next few months, I would definitely expect a console beta, but as far as we know it's going to be current gen only and also crossplay is not yet confirmed although it kind of seems to be the trend with free-to-play shooters nowadays having crossplay um the other thing that i wondered about is this game mode and that kind of feeds into the replayability questions i have just a little bit the game mode is essentially like plunder from like warzone one and i worry about its replayability and holding power now what i mean by that is most of the games played really well you fought all the way to the end of the clock to, to try to bank out the most money, right? But inevitably, there are some matches where one or two teams kind of takes off out in front. If you're playing a quick match, really, you want to be that top team. And sometimes uh, a team can bank some money really fast, maybe steal another one and get so far ahead for the last several minutes of the round, there's no way you can catch them. Now, in something like an extraction type game mode or a BR or even a round based shooter, you know, Valorant, CSGO, um, SD, Rainbow Six Siege, all those more popular first person shooter multiplayer arena games, you're fighting for that last round. You know, you always have a chance at the end. In this game mode, I see a flaw in the fact that if one team gets way out into the lead, you're kind of wasting your time for the last three minutes or so. It, 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 you can't you can't come back at a certain time and the end of the game can be actually boring where you're just kind of running around trying to be spoilers. So I think while it's great that they're innovating, there are some potential flaws in this game mode I see. Um, with, with those other ones, it's always exciting down to the finish almost. With this one, not so much the case every every few games there was kind of like even sometimes if it was us then the team in the lead you know we really didn't have to play out the remaining time on the clock so that's something they definitely need to have a ranked mode i think to hold people's attention ranked mode is the best way in my opinion to to put in skill-based matchmaking which it probably needs to happen because there is definitely going to be a learning curve with this game how the different contestants play off of each other learning the maps is always hard how to play into destruction use the gadgets there's a lot of layers here which is great and adds to the replayability but for those to not be frustrating i think this game desperately needs a ranked mode and i do believe that that is coming but is that enough to carry this game mode because the most fun you're going to have in matches is if you're matched with people of your similar skill level and then to make skill-based matchmaking worth it you need those rewards for progressing and playing against harder players if you think to to call of duty why skill-based matchmaking sucks it's because you don't get any reward other than playing against harder players for doing well if you do get new rewards new in-game items you can wear ways you can show off your skill then that makes it worth it and i think this game with this game mode is going to desperately need a really good ranked mode to keep people playing now, the other questions I have is Nexon. Now, I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this publisher, but they're not without controversy. This publisher has had some controversy in the past. Some of the things they've, they've talked about is they've even been under fire for sexual harassment, discrimination claims um, in February of 2021. They've had backlash over video game addiction and in-game uh, purchases in 2018 and 2019, talking about predatory loot boxes in their games. This is according to Kotaku, CNBC, The Korea Times. And they've also been sued from a former employee over wrongful termination as of PC Gamer in December 2017. So. Next on the publisher has raised some red flags for some people in the know, and I wonder how they're going to take care of this. And that leads into how are they going to handle microtransactions, right? That is one of the big questions and we need to keep our eye on that. Is it going to be fair? 
As long as it sticks with the cosmetic stuff, I think we're gonna be fine and likely that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna make outrageous and crazy cosmetics that people wanna buy to kind of express themselves in games and that's okay. But with Nexon in charge, this is something we need to keep an eye on and it feels like Embark Studios kind of has creative liberty with this game. That's just the vibe I get from their posts, from their website and things like that. This is the game they're working on and Nexon seems to just be kind of uh, a shareholder in it. You know, uh, multi you know, they own the majority of the stock. They own a controlling share of the stock at Embark, but it feels like they've been kind of hands off. That's just the vibe I get from, from the internet and stuff. With Nexon involved, we need to keep an eye on it make sure everything's on the up and up and also make sure microtransactions are good because that company does have a little bit of a history. And then the other question I have is content amount, right? Like as it sets now, closed beta for sure. And a lot of these questions will be answered later. And a lot of the stuff I even have in the negative stuff is easily fixable. A lot of these things could and probably will be addressed by the end of the launch. So this is definitely not a negative video, but it does have questions about the content amount. Currently, as it sets in the closed beta, there are very limited guns. There's no way to change your gun and update it. And also, I'm curious if they're just going to have the one game mode with the cash out that you can play either in quick match or in a tournament mode. I'm guessing since that is likely the game show that that could be the case. So with one type of game mode, we'll see how long the replayability and why I have these questions about replayability and content amount and stuff like that is can it hold people's attention with this one type of game mode? As you guys can see now, now this is a closed beta guys. So the numbers themselves mean absolutely nothing. The lower numbers than you're used to seeing at a launch. This is a closed beta. They've only had a few number of people allowed into it so not everybody can play so that, that that's not important what is kind of important to me and intriguing just a little bit is the trend so if we look at that from off of the peak it almost seems like about a third of the people remain playing and if you think about the kind of people that sign up for this it's people in the know content creators and people that have been following the game and excited about it and signed up for it early and you can see that already two-thirds of them have dropped off during this closed beta time now there could be a number of reasons for that but I just want to kind of put those questions out there like are they going to have a lot of content is there going to be a ranked mode is there going to be more stuff to add to replayability because i could see a game mode like plunder from warzone getting just a little bit old with some of those matches not being exciting all the way up until the end and then some of the bad stuff that definitely needs fixed guys i want to talk about the movement the movement is pretty rough. I believe they've acknowledged this. The, the movement delay, it feels really spongy. There seems to be quite a bit of input delay. The mantling is really rough, whether you mantle or not, how it works, how fast it is. It just felt really floaty and not crisp. In a game where movement is huge, you know, you have zip lines, jump pads, the maps are big, destruction dynamic. It's gonna be a really fast paced shooter. The movement needs to be dialed in and they need to do a lot of work on the movement and the input delay. The time to kill is a little bit long for some things. I think the variety is too wide. I think the, the larger, the, the big contestants, the big guys have a little bit too much tankiness to them and the small ones get time to kill is, is, is a lot faster. There's like kind of a wide variety, but the time to kill is overall really long and the overall balance, they definitely have some stuff to work on. There are some really strong metas um, with healing, uh, healing large contestants, large builds uh, with with sledgehammers, and the invisible small uh, small builds with the knife is incredibly frustrating to play against because there's really no footsteps or anything like that to hear them coming. So they really don't have a downside. And just the the game mode overall has a little bit of weakness for replayability and randomness. I don't know if that comes down to balancing maybe the time in the game or you know how many cash drops there are to always kind of give people a chance. Maybe like an overtime round or like a like the last 30 seconds or a minute there's double cash so people can come back at the end or something like that but there needs to be a little bit of balance with the game mode anyway guys i think that's all i had about the finals trying to cover everything console information the good the bad the questions that are still remaining but overall i think this is a great game for the genre as a whole hopefully more studios try to think outside the box like embark is doing you have to commend them on that Thank you guys for choosing my video to watch when there's so many good ones out there and uh, hopefully we'll see you later on.